thank you so much for all of you coming. We really appreciate your involvement. I'm going to get through a few housekeeping things right off the bat. Um, if you haven't already signed in at the back, please sign in uh, as you leave today. Um, Tony is going to be videotaping uh, the meeting, so uh, we will be able to post it out on our hospital website along with the PowerPoint presentation. So if there's people that were not able to make it to the meeting tonight, they're welcome to go out there and access the information. Um, there are also a couple handouts available at the back on the table. You're welcome to take those. Uh, I will say we have a lot of information to get through tonight. So we're going to move along quickly. As a common courtesy, I will ask everyone to listen to our information without interruption so that it will be easier for everyone to hear and allow us to proceed in a timely manner. We will have questions, uh, a time period for questions at the end of the entire presentation. The next, excuse me, the next business in order is the introduction of the board and the CEO. I'll start off. I am Cindy Wolf. I was appointed to the board in January of 2015 and elected to the board in November 2016. I was recently elected to the position of the board chair when Matt Hansen resigned. Unfortunately for you, I do not have the gift of public speaking like Matt did, but I'll do my best. For a little personal background, I grew up on a ranch south of Lewiston. I attended University of Idaho and LCSC, um, and I was never going to marry a farmer, just totally against it. Then, Elton and Bobby Brown introduced me to Ray, and consequently I've lived here in Garfield County for 14 years now. Um, a few years ago, uh, after almost 15 years of employment with Regents, which became Cambria in Utah, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon, uh, I did retire from that to spend more time with our parents and out at the ranch. Um, I'll now hand the mic on to Chris Harris, who is Secretary of the Board. I'm Chris Harris. I've um, been born and raised here in the county. Um, I graduated high school, born in the hospital. And uh, I decided to run for uh, the board. I ran as a write in in 2015, was elected. Uh, was sworn in in 2016, and so I've been here about a year and a half now. And the reason why I got on this board is, is I felt that the hospital needed <coughs> help, change, direction, and I feel that I've done that. And if you listen to what we've got to do tonight, I think we can go in the right direction. We need to move forward. I'm Janice Edelson, and uh, I'm a retired registered nurse. I trained at uh, Sacred Heart uh, School of Nursing. Uh, 40 years of management experience, and uh, unfortunately 50 years since I graduated. Just had the 50th reunion last year. Um, I served uh, on the board from January 2010 to December 31st of 2015. That's the regular six-year term. Uh, I'm on the board now to finish out Father Bob's tenure, which finishes December 31st of this year. Uh, past board members that I've served with include Roger Dombeck, Jim Mays, 
Ray Hoffman, Bonnie Mulrooney, Chris Darby, Father Bob Turner, and Pat Richardson, five of which have medical backgrounds. Okay, thank you. I'm Gary Hauser, and uh, I was born here, and well, I actually was born down at Dayton, but I've lived here all my life, except for a period of time when I was in college down in Southern California. I graduated with a degree in economics, and uh, I lived in Seattle, where I, was, I worked in the financial world. Um, I came back here, I've been farming here since 1973, and uh, I served on the hospital board once before. Uh, I asked, was asked uh, by Matt Hansen to uh, take his place, and uh, which I did. I I, uh, I have a lot of respect for Matt. I think he was extremely good uh, chairman of the board, and I like the other board members very much. These are very very competent people. And I hope that we can all work together to bring some decent medical care, some good medical care to the Pomeroy. The, uh, you know, it's important to have medical care. It's also important to get along and attempt to do it together. So, uh, anyway. And now I'd like to introduce Brenda Parnell, our CEO and superintendent. I'm Brenda Parnell. Um, I have been working for the district since uh, last November, um, working to turn the hospital around and make it a great place. Um, I have a master's in healthcare administration. I have extensive experience in uh, critical access hospitals. Um, in rural settings, both in Alaska, Washington, Idaho, and Kansas. Um, just a little bit about myself. I've been asked to share something personal. And, um, I'm a triathlete. I um, like to be physically fit, um, and I like to promote health um, in everything that I do. Um, I have given um, some sport equipment to our employees so that they can enjoy um, the pleasures of exercising because that is one of our strategic planning initiatives. Um, and I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I would like at this time to introduce Steve Matthews um, with Silvam, Ledlin, Matthews, and Sheldon in Spokane. He is our employee attorney. He's going to share some history of contracts and backgrounds in the contract. What a pleasure it is to be in Pomeroy tonight. I've got to confess, this is my first trip here to your city, and I'm very impressed. What a what a wonderful uh, what a wonderful city it is. I grew up uh, in a little town called Medical Lake, and uh, so I I got a warm spot in my heart for small communities um, like this one and, and rural communities. I've been asked just to give you a little bit of background. I understand, I've been told that there's been some issues regarding provider contracts and how do they work and, and that there have been some concerns around that recently. Uh, I think the first time I was asked to review an employer contract, uh, Andrew Craigie was the CEO of the hospital district. So as you can tell, I've, I've seen a few years and I've seen a few contracts. I think during Andrew's administration, I 
probably saw contracts that were critical or that had unusual characteristics or features, um, and, and I would review those, um, make changes in them, uh, give advice to the district, and, and uh, participate in however I was instructed to participate in signing those. I think when uh, Jay Pottinger arrived as the CEO, I was utilized a little more uniformly, and that meaning that I think I saw, of course you never know what you don't know, but I think I saw most of the contracts, if not all of the contracts, uh, provider contracts that were signed during that uh, period of time. And um, again, my function was to review contracts, provide advice, uh, try to help get over sticking points so that uh, providers could come to the district and work. Um, and more recently, um, my exposure to contracts like, I think there was an administrator here by the name of Mr. Smiley. I think like during his time, I don't think I saw a single contract. I, I think contracts were signed, but I, I was not involved. Um, and that's not to say, by the way, that they were bad or that they shouldn't have been done that way. It's just, just the way things work. Um, more recently, I have, again, I think I'm, I'm involved uh, as a, a resource and a source of review, legal review, for all the contracts uh, that, that are coming through. And so I have some general knowledge. Um, I don't intend to speak to um, any individual contract negotiation. I, that wouldn't, I don't think that would be necessarily be appropriate, but I can speak in general to some issues that I think may be um, of, of concern in the community. Let me speak first to at-will employment. Uh, I think there's been some concern expressed about contracts being at-will. At-will employment is by far the most common form of employment there is in the state of Washington. I'll use myself as an example. I've been an attorney for, I think, more than 30 years, and I've worked in both the public and private sector. I've been an owner of two law firms and an employee at one of those two law firms. Um, and in every setting, public, private, even as an owner today of my own law firm, my partners, or we're actually not a partnership, but, but I call them my partners, could fire me tomorrow and that would be the end of my, that would be the end of my relationship um, in my firm. At-will employment's very com common. And the reason it's, it's more common than you think, sometimes people are shocked by at-will employment, it, it kind of evens the playing field. There's no law, there's no court in the land that will make an employee work for an employer they don't want to work for, even if there's a contract. Let's suppose that I was viewed, and I wish this was true, oh, I wish this was true, that I was so vital to my law firm that they'd give me a 10-year contract, and they'd say, Steve, don't ever leave us. You're just so important to us. Well. If one morning I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and decided I was not, not only would I not <coughs> go to work anymore, I wouldn't even give notice. I'm just out of there. I'm gone. There isn't a court in the land that would make me go back and work for that law firm or, frankly, any employee work for any employer. Why? Because it just wouldn't be right to force someone to work uh, for an employer they don't want to work for. Well, employment at will simply evens the playing field. The employer doesn't have to keep an employee. No one can make the employer keep on an employee. At the same time, the employee doesn't have to work. Nobody will make the employee work for the employer. So employment at will is fairly common. Um, in my history with the board, and, and that reaches back in time as I said, many, many years. It's always been the policy of the board that employment contracts would be at will, at least to the best of my recollection. Um, and in medical care, health care in general, employees are generally at will employees. Physicians, mid-level providers, you know, um, physicians assistants, uh, nurse practitioners, and so forth. 
Um, I, I know of a member of my family who has recently signed a contract as a nurse practitioner, and, and uh, that family member of mine is an at-will employee um, in a, a large healthcare organization in the state, one of the, one of the biggest in the state. So it's not uncommon. Um, there are sometimes questions about the tenure of employment contracts. I know that this has been an issue at the district historically. Um, I think there was a desire, a, a great desire, to get providers in here. And so, uh, and then to retain them once they're here. So there was an effort to get um, contracts for some specified period of time with the providers that come. And that also makes a lot of sense. It's fairly common uh, in the healthcare industry. Again, my family member that I mentioned earlier, I, I don't remember how long the contract is, but it has a term. So it's not unusual to have a term, and it's not unusual to for the employer who invests time and money in the employee to get them here and get them functioning in their job to desire to have a, a contract of some specific term. Obviously, whether or not a particular employee or applicant wants to sign that contract is up to that employee or applicant. No one, again, can make the employee agree to any particular term, and no one can make the district uh, modify a desired term. Now, one of the things that's happened historically here, and again, this was in place before I came, was that there were usually uh, some sort of retention bonus, or, or um, I think they called it deferred compensation. Deferred in the sense that if a particular provider stayed the stated period of time, usually years, that at the end of that time they get a, a lump sum of money for sticking around at the district. And, and that I've seen that as being fairly common Maybe not in every contract, but in many of the contracts that I've reviewed um, through the years. Uh, one other issue is severance pay that I, I've heard concerns uh, raised about severance pay. Severance pay is not required in the state of Washington, and frankly, it's not very common. Um, I, I think I could count on two hands the number of contracts I've seen with severance pay provisions. It's, it's just not a, a very common contract term. Um, again, if the employer wants to uh, have that in, as, a, as something in, in their employment contracts, the law certainly permits them to do that. It certainly <coughs> permits employees to try to negotiate for that as uh, an option. But nothing requires it, and again, um, that's that's something that the parties need to work out themselves. Finally, I, I just say this: um, there's a need in healthcare in general uh, today for um, entities that provide care to be fiscally responsible. I think that's, and I'm no expert in this, but I think that's particularly true in rural settings. So <coughs> boards, um, managers, whatever, um, need to be careful about what they do, uh, particularly I think in this setting because we're talking about uh, public funded health care uh, in, in this district. And so um, obviously um, the board needs to be careful about what they commit to in contracts and, and what they decide to do. Um, historically, I think that the contracts we've seen at the district, just compared to my own, what I've been exposed to, okay, in, in my practice, have been fairly generous. Um, I'm not saying too generous. I don't know if they're too generous or not generous enough. I'm not making that judgment. That's not my job. But the board has a responsibility to make sure that, that things are not too generous and that the operations of the district are fiscally responsible. Um, let me say that I really appreciate your willingness to put up with me uh, for a few minutes. Um, I want you to know that 
Uh, what I've been are instances where the district has worked very hard uh, to get contracts signed. And they've not always been signed, but but I know efforts have been made, and this, and this stretches through the years. Back to Mr. Craigie, on forward, that there's been a real effort to uh, get contracts signed, uh, make the employees feel good about their contract. Um, I can say that recently, um, in an effort to get a contract signed, I offered to uh, meet with uh, one of the uh, people involved on the, on the employee side to see if we could clear up concerns or confusion. Uh, and that was something that the management of the board actually wanted me to do. So, um, you know, I think your board and your management are committed to trying to get good people here and to work with people to get acceptable contracts. And I've seen that work, and sometimes I've seen it fail. But I want you to know I've never been instructed to to write a contract or to alter a contract in a way that would render it inappropriate or unreasonable, um, at least from the board's policy standpoint. Thank you very much. I appreciate your listening to me. Thanks. Thank you.